Hey everybody, how are you doing? This is Greg Gossett and today is Sunday, uh, July 3rd, 2022. And I appreciate you coming to um, another episode of the Gossett Trading and Mentoring Weekend Review of the stock trades uh, that I entered, exited, uh, exited last week. So we're gonna go over all those. But first of all, hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a good 4th of July weekend. Hope you're staying safe. Hope you're having some fun. Uh, hope trading's been okay. We had a little bit of up move last week, uh, stopped the uh, carnage to the downside. So uh, uh, we'll see what happens. Hopefully that's a, a trend of things to come, but we never know, right? Have to go through our technicals. Uh, I never tr try to have an opinion really about what's going on with the market. I really like to just stay with the technicals, pick my levels, position size correctly, and uh, do what I've done for the last 27 years. Doesn't always work. I mean, uh, year over year is usually profitable, but uh, you know, it's, sometimes it's feast or famine. So that is part of trading regardless of what anyone tells you. Uh, there's ups and downs. And uh, I think the key is just keeping your downs low and optimizing the, the moves to the upside. So easier said than done. But uh, today what we're gonna do, we're gonna go through, take a look at, look at my current positions, talk about when I bought them, why I bought them, and how I am gonna manage them going forward. I uh, have two open positions now. I had three. Um, I have Pfizer on the daily. I have Alibaba on the weekly. And I did have Home Depot on the monthly as well. I do mention this often, but worth repeating. <clears throat> you know, a big part of my trading philosophy is trading different time frames. I do trade all day long, day trades. I make somewhere between the accounts that I manage 500, 700 trades during the day, if you can believe that full-time job uh, but I also like to trade dailies I like to trade weekly bars I like to trade monthly bars I think by getting a nice cross-section of different time frames it helps even out your equity curve sometimes a smaller time frame not work might not work for you but a longer one might and vice versa so trading uh, multiple time frames is a big part of my uh, trading philosophy and uh, I've done this for so long uh, that I'm I'm very certain that it is, for me at least, it, a good approach. In addition to that, I also like to trade different uh, types of strategies. Um, sometimes one strategy is not working, the other will work. I also like to trade as many different types of equities or as many different types of markets as possible. Of course, we have equities, but about 75% of equities are gonna move together. Uh, but that's why, why I like to trade oil, gas, bonds, silver, dollar, euro, uh, yen, different, uh, uh, markets uh, have different personalities and it's the same philosophy as trading different time frames. It's the same uh, philosophy as trading different um, uh, strategies by trading different markets. And uh, Bill Simons from uh, Renaissance Technologies, uh, the man who solved the markets, great book, by the way, if you ever want to read that, one of the largest uh, hedge funds and quant funds uh, that there are. But, uh, you know, I listened to an interview or I read an interview of his in his book and he talked about the same thing, multiple time frames, multiple markets, multiple strategies. So when I read that, I felt like I was in good company. So, all right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna, uh, first of all, run the US legal disclaimer. Secondly, we're gonna come back, take a look at the current positions, talk about when I bought them, why I bought them, how I'm gonna manage, the go how I'm gonna manage them going forward and how they were doing. After that, we're gonna take a few minutes. We're gonna talk about trader psychology. Really the most important part of this podcast is trader psychology. Um, you know, it's not that hard to press the buy and sell button. It's not that hard to set up a trade, but the hard part is sticking with it, doing what you're supposed to do. It's like dieting, right? Uh, I think we all know how to lose weight. If we want to, we eat better foods, we exercise more. Um, pretty straightforward. And it's pretty straightforward <laughs> with trading as well right? Pick your levels, position size, have a good risk to reward level, get out quickly if you're wrong, keep with it if you're right, at least until you get certain levels above. We all know how to do it, but it's hard to do because the emotions come in. Oh, I could have bought a jet ski with that money or oh, whatever, right? And it's the same with dieting, right? Yeah. Eat less food, eat better food, exercise more. We all know how to do it, but how many people do it? Not a lot because it's hard because there's emotions involved. And there's emotions involved in trading. So that's why I like to talk about trader psychology. After that, my good friend, Frank, the trading poet, always has a nice poem. I'm going to cover that for us. Um, 
I like reading those. Reading those, they're always pertinent to what's going on, and uh, he's a dang good poet. So we're going to do that. Then I have gone down through my watch list. What I'm looking for are some potential trades for next week for myself. Uh, generally, before I take a trade or when I go through this on the weekend, the, the the stock price generally has to, or whatever market it is, has to go down a little first or has to go up first. Generally, right where it's at is not the position. So uh, anyway, I did mark, I think I marked 14 symbols. And uh, so we'll go through each one of those and I'll show you what I'm looking for next week. Okay, so that's the plan. Um, Hang tight, I'm gonna run the US legal disclaimer and I will be back in about 40 seconds. Thanks so much. This video or live broadcast, like all instructional materials produced by Gossett Trading and Mentoring LLC is created and published for informational and educational purposes only. Please carefully read and or listen to the US government required disclaimer before watching this video or live stream broadcast. The video link and disclaimer text are located in the description section of this video or live broadcast here and here. Thank you so much. All right, thanks for holding through that with me. So let's get started. First off is Pfizer. So <clears throat> I did buy Pfizer all the way back here on June 17th, had a multiple combination of, of confluences of indicators lining up. That's why I bought it. I always like to buy, uh, especially for my swing trades, I like to buy when I have multiple signals. And here are the two signals of why I bought. We went under 30, over 30, intraday during the day. That's one. That's a valid signal just by itself. But we also had an intraday rejection of this 300-day moving average. This is the orange line right here. So I did buy here 46.56. Of course, I position size based upon the volatility of the market. And I'm going to go over that with you a little later on a potential trade. Um, but you can see pink line down here this is my emergency stop if it got down to here I would sell it regardless of when it happens usually I am an end of day trader on the dailies I wait for the end of the day to make my decision and my end of day stop would have been a close below the 300 day moving average well you can see it didn't it just took right off like a rocket ship uh, but you know in case I have an end of day trade that is not going well I'm not going to just hold on to it forever have to have an emergency stop down here whether that's one minute after the market opens or one minute before the market closes if it ever gets down there I'm going to go ahead and just get out of the trade because I know exactly what that dollar amount is going to be but luckily uh, this trade did work and <clears throat> so when I buy something, just to kind of quickly go over this, when I, when I, when I find a confluence of signals, when I, buy, when I buy the position, first thing I do is position size uh, based upon the market volatility. That is where my maximum allowed stop, my emergency stop happens down here. Then where's my end of day stop? Close below the 300 day moving average. So I always want to take care of the risk first. I don't even want to think about profits because profits are not what you want to think about. You want to think about managing risk. So anyway, maximum allowed loss, end of day stop. Now I have a uh, uh, orange line here. This is 1.5 ATRs above my entry. If the price ever gets to the 1.5 ATR uh, point, uh, 1.5 ATRs above my entry, then I go into trailing stop mode. Well. When I go into trailing stop mode, all that means is as soon as I hit that 1.5 ATR trailing stop level, then in the future, if I get a close below a previous day's low, I will get out of half of the position. Well, it kept moving up, and I guess this is a good time to say also that whenever it moves up the value of 0.45 ATRs from the previous day's close, I sell 10% of my position. That's a profit target. Sometimes I hit one, sometimes I hit two, sometimes I hit three, some, I've hit six or seven of them before. I mean, I've been out of a 60 to 70% of my position in one day, but it doesn't usually happen. But on the way up on this, on this move, I took a lot of profits off. I always wanna sell something into strength when the market gives it to me. So entered 
at 4656 put my trailing stop level here two days later it got there uh, kept taking partial profits off as we went up went up went up went up on this day here what's this the 28th I had a close below the previous day's low right so we get to a trailing stop level here then I get a close below the previous day's low I sold half at 50.71 for an 8.04% gain. Now I didn't sell it all, I only sold half. And it just kept moving up. So that's the great thing with selling half. It's kind of a no-lose situation because if you sell half and then it keeps going higher, you're glad that you still have half. If you sell half and it keeps going and then it continues down, you're glad you sold half. So it's one about one of the only win-win situations uh, in trading. That's why I'm a big fan of selling half. So going forward, how am I going to manage this trade? Well, right now, I would allow this to come all the way back and close under the 300 day moving average. I have a lot of profit in the trade and I want to risk, I, I want to risk some of that open profits to hopefully get more profits. So the, what I'm looking for, if we continue to move up, of course, I'm going to take partial profits off. Right now we're at a 57 RSI. If we get to 65 RSI, then I go into five EMA trailing stop mode, meaning that if I get a close below the five EMA, I just get rid of the rest of the trade. If it continues up, rejects the 70 RSI, I will sell half. And then if I get a close below a previous day's low after rejecting the 70 RSI, I will get out of the full full position. All right. So that's how I manage these trades. I'll mention this at the end of the podcast, but I do teach private one-on-one -on -one lessons in the evening time. I teach you all five of the different approaches that I use step-by-step -step, and we go into detail about these trailing stops and so forth. So I'll mention this at the end in case you're interested. So with that being said, I do have a half a position left, uh, except for, you know, what I've taken off here as profits. And thankfully, Pfizer has been very, very strong. The remaining half of the position based upon where I bought it, uh, based upon the close is up 10.86%. So pretty, pretty good dang trade on Pfizer and grateful for that. All right. So that's the dailies. Let's go to the weeklies. <clears throat> Weekly, I did buy Alibaba back here on the 27th of May with a higher low V1. Here's bar one, here's bar two. Bar two went under bar one, closed above bar one's close, closed in the value zone. So bought this here at 93.03. Of course, you can see my emergency stop down here. Where would have been my end of day stop? Well, on a V1, your end of day stop would be halfway of the washout bar. This is the washout bar. You can see the red line. This is my level. If it closed below this level, I would get out. Emergency stop, end of day stop, closed below halfway of the washout bar. It moved up nicely. Of course, I took partial profits on the way up. Here on this week, we went above 50 RSI and below 50 RSI. That's my signal to sell half of the position. I did sell half of the position for a 15.32% gain. Um, orange line up here is the trailing stop level. You can see the same week that I sold half, it did get to my trailing stop level. So now I'm in trailing stop mode. And after I go into trailing stop mode, do I have a close bull the previous day's low here? No, I don't. Does this bar close below this low? No, it doesn't. Does this bar close below this uh, bar? No, it doesn't. So trailing stop, uh, trailing stop mode, I am in trailing stop mode, but I have not had a close below uh, the previous day's low, but I did sell half here again because it rejected the 50 RSI. This is just something, a protocol in my trading that I use. A rejection of the 50 RSI is not a great idea. And that's why I sold half, but luckily it is higher uh, than where I sold the other. So I'm glad I still have the half. If this coming week closes below the previous week's low, I of course will go ahead and get out of another half of whatever I have remaining. Okay. So the second half, uh, that I still have entry from exit up 19.66%. So really nice trade there. All right. Home Depot stinker of the bunch. Uh, I was a little disappointed on this trade because such a great, perfect setup. 
Uh, this setup is called a return to value V1 or V2. This happened to be a V1. A return to value V1 or V2 essentially means that you're in an uptrend, and I define an uptrend in this context of having a close above the value zone. Here's the screen line, the top one, and then the bottom. Anywhere inside here is called the value zone. And I really like to see stocks, equities, whatever market be in a nice uptrend and then pull back into the value zone. See how I'm not going to buy up here. Here's the third ATR channel. I know 92% of prices fail there. Eh, got up into that range and failed, came back down into the value zone. Now, just because it comes into the value zone does not mean I immediately buy it. After it comes into the value zone, you can see it came between this screen line and this screen line. I need some stability. I want to see that there's some buyers to show that there's some equilibrium that it's not going to just keep going down. Well, it came into the value zone, stayed steady, stayed steady, stayed steady. That's what I need. I need two days of sideways motion or two bars of sideways motion. Then I have a V1 entry. V1 entry consists of two bars. Here's bar one, bar two. doesn't matter if they're daily bars, one minute bars. It's the same thing. Bar one, bar two, bar two goes under bar one, closes above bar one's close. That's the signal. That's where I bought. Of course, I have my emergency stop. We just talked about this a little while ago. What's my end of day stop on a V1 or V2? Halfway the washout bar. Here's the bar. Here's the line. Last um, month, because we just started a new month, if I have a close below halfway of the washout bar, I get out. Well, it definitely did close below, right? Did not get into my emergency stop, but it closed below. That's why I had to take the loss, loss of 10.27%. All right, so not too bad. Two out of three, pretty good. A little bummed out about the Home Depot trade, but it's fine, right? I position size correctly for it. And there was a trade, I had to go to the doctor on uh, Friday. And so I did see a valid trade. I didn't take it because I was at the doctor and I wasn't here for the close. Um, but it's a good example that I'm gonna go through later to kind of show you exactly how I would have entered this trade had I been here. Although I do see the futures are down right now. So maybe better uh, uh, that I did go to the doctor, but we'll, we'll see. Okay, so those are the three positions. The Pfizer on the daily, still have half position in trailing stop mode. Um, um, I'm sorry, not in trailing stop. Mate. We are in trailing stop mode. We had a close below the previous day's low, but I still have half of the position. Uh, current That current position up 10.86%. Alibaba sold half with the rejection of the 50 RSI in trailing stop mode, have not had a close below the previous day's low. Uh, current uh, remaining position up 19.66% and Home Depot on the monthly as we just went over did close that out for a 10.27% loss. All right, so not too shabby. So listen, before we get on with the show, uh, I want to stop here, talk a little bit about trader psychology. You know, uh, this is the Divergent Trader at Trader Divergent over on Twitter. I really like this channel, everyone. I would highly recommend that you subscribe over at Trader Divergent. He has great posts. They're short, they're to the point, and they pack a lot of weight. And uh, let's see uh, what uh, the Divergent Trader has to say to, uh, to us today. The secret of your future is hidden in your daily routine. Successful people do daily what the unsuccessful, unsuccessful ones only do occasionally. You know, this kind of seems like one of those sayings that you go, yeah, 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 I know. But folks, it's really, really true. It's such a huge part of my trading. I am kind of OCD. People that know me know me know that I'm OCD, but I am very strict with my routine. And it's not just about trading. It's all aspects of my life that circle back to trading. Time I go to bed, time I meditate, what I do during trading, what I do after trading. I always go for a long hike after trading because it helps kind of help the adrenaline get out. Like I said, I day trade a lot. 500 to 700 trades a day. So it's a good time for me to get out, kind of get the ants out of my pants, right? Get the heebie-jeebies out. And uh, more importantly, I reflect upon my trading day. What did I do right? 
What did I do wrong? How could I improve this? What could I have done? What should I do better tomorrow? So it's kind of a post-game analysis. Every pro team takes a look at their last game and they analyze it. They watch film. They go through it. You could have done this better. You Hey, you need to do that better. It's the same thing with trading. But eating, meditating, hiking, resting, visualizing, uh, stu a chart study outside of trading, but get yourself into a routine. He is right. The divergent trader is right. The secret of your future is hidden in your daily routine. Successful people do daily what the unsuccessful ones only do occasionally. This is a tough business, people. I'm not one of those people that say, oh yeah, trading is easy. You're going to make a billion dollars. It's tough. It's super, super tough. And if you want to be good at this, if you want to stand out, beat the market, beat other traders, you're going to have to do things they are not. I'd like to talk a little bit about my trading partner, Ava, at Presence Trades. My gosh, am I lucky to have Ava as a trading partner? You know, in our private Skype group, Ava is in there kind of manning the ship, uh, womaning the ship, I should say. And she's such an amazing trader. She has taught me so many things things keeps try to keep tries to keep me in the right mind frame during the day and uh, talk about routine she gets up early she watches videos she marks her level she goes for a run so she has nice a lot of nice blood and oxygen pumping in her brain then she trades like a champ all day long after she goes for a walk like I do straight back to the charts she I don't know how many hours she puts in a day probably 12 and that's why she's an amazing trader. And that's why she is going to be uh, a rock star. And I know you're going to hear more about her. So follow her at Presence Trades over on Twitter. Um, you'll be really glad you did. And she's a great example of a routine and why she's gotten to be such a good trader. So thank you, The Divergent Trader. Really appreciate that. Please follow over at Trader Divergent over on Twitter and appreciate all your posts. Uh, divergent trader. Okay, so bef before we start looking at potential uh, setups for next week, uh, just want to check in with Frank at Franco D over on Twitter. Friend of mine, great poet, great trader, great musician, great writer, all sorts of skills. And he always posts things. Uh, he always posts a great poem about what's going on, the, on with the market. Let's see what he has to say today. Rough and choppy waters. Gains made on nickels, dimes, and quarters. Stocks under fire from tech to brick and mortar. Cash being stashed. Crypto's just a horror. Traders in the mix as they seek a shock absorber. Pretty good sum up, right? One more time. Rough and choppy waters. Gains made on nickels, dimes, and quarters. Stocks under fire from tech to brick and mortar. That's true. Everything's under fire. Cash being stashed. That's true. People going to cash. Crypto just a whore. Yep. Crypto's not doing so hot Somali. Traders in the mix as they seek a shock absorber. What a great poem. Thank you, Frank. Right to the point. Appreciate your, appreciate your effort that you put in and, and put these here. Hope uh, that that trading uh, coffee book uh, is going to come out one day. He talked, he, he, I, you know, a lot of us in the group have suggested, Frank, these poems are so great. Please put them into a coffee trading book. Of course, I'll be buying one. I'll be telling you all about it, but they're, they're so great. And what a talent. Thanks a lot, Frank. Okie dokie, smoky. Here we go. Let me put this over here. All right, here we go. I have 14 symbols that uh, interest me this week for potentially for next week. Let's go through and I'll explain why. All right, so Apple. Well, Apple way off the lows down here, 129.44, something like that was the low. We're at 138.98, so we've had a nice little $10 uh, rally approximately. But right now we almost formed a V2. And again, if you want to learn more about V1s and V2s, and they're a huge part of my trading, I have a uh, a playlist in my YouTube channel called Lessons Playlist, and I have a link in or I have a video that specifically talks about V1s and V2s, and they're such a big part of my trading, and almost a V2. A V2 would have been uh, in, consists of three bars: bar one, bar two, bar three. Bar one. 
bar two has to go below bar one by a quarter ATR. From here to here is a quarter. I'm sorry, from here to here is, a, is one ATR. From here to here, one ATR. So I need a quarter. This was much more than a quarter. But then bar three would have to close over bar one forming this little V here. Well, it didn't quite do it, so it's not valid. Now, if it does it tomorrow, it doesn't matter. There's no such thing as a V3. But what I'm looking here, what I like is the potential for a 520 crossover. Boy, I have not mentioned the word crossover in a long time because the market's been going down. But here's the 5 EMA. Here's this little, little line. The little blue line is the 5 EMA. The thicker blue line is the 20 EMA. If the 5 crosses over the 20, that is a good, valid, back-tested, quantified, profitable approach to trading Apple. It doesn't mean every single crossover is going to be positive, but over time, the crossovers have shown that they are positive. Now, I like I like stocks when I'm looking at a, a crossover situation to have some sideways motion before the crossover happens. Well, this is sideways motion. We have been moving sideways. So next week, if the five crosses over the 20 and it's not too far extended, and what I mean by too far extended is right here, it's hiding under this 50 SMA as the two ATR channel. If the price is over the, the second ATR channel, I'm not going to take the trade because the third ATR channel is right above and 92% of prices fail there. So ideally, what I'd really like to see is this tighten up, just go sideways a little bit more and then have the 520 crossover uh, with more sideways motion. So uh, Apple, what I'm looking for on Apple next week is a 520 EMA crossover, but only if that happens and only if it's not too high. Number two. AGQ. Well, AGQ, you know, speaking of Ava, I remember Ava nailed a AGQ trade on exactly the same setup as we may potentially have with an under 30 over 30. You can see the RSI is 2942. So it's not over 30 yet, but if it gets over 30, that will be my buy signal. Now, if it closes at like 38, 39, I'm not going to take it because I know the 50 RSI above is most likely going to act as resistance. So usually with an under 30, over 30, I like it somewhere between 30, 36 kind of as a maximum. So we'll see what happens, but I am definitely going to be looking uh, uh, next week to see if AGQ can close over the 30 RSI. And we are very close right now. Advanced micro devices. Well, right now we are at a 30.99. So we, we did go under 30 over 30, but I'm looking, I'm not in the trade. So what I'm looking for is another under 30 over 30 for next week. That's what I'm looking for on AMD is another under 30 over 30. I see the futures are down right now, fairly big. So, you know, uh, with the market opening on Tuesday, if the futures stay down here, it would probably be under 30 with the potential to go back over. Ideally, I'd like to see the under 30 over 30 close back over the negative third ATR channel as well, because 92% of prices fail here. And when you're below it, generally bad things happen. But I like to, I would like to see this close above the 30 RSI. Uh, I'm sorry, in the future, go under 30 and then close back above the 30 RSI, close back over that negative third ATR channel and throw in a V2 for a uh, good measure. And that's what I would like on AMD. Caterpillar. All right. Similar to AMD, Caterpillar uh, came down. Looks like we tested this low. We did go under 30 over 30 on Friday. This would have been a valid signal right here uh, on Friday. But again, I was at an appointment. I didn't take the trade uh, with futures down. Looks like that was probably a good idea, but it's 31 right now. If we do open up on Tuesday under 30, if it closes back over 30, that's what I will be looking for. Carnival Cruise Line. Well, you can see I had the line here on Friday for a V2. Here is bar one, here is bar two. Bar two goes under bar one. Bar three needs to close above bar one's close. See how during the day at one point it closed above? That would have been a valid V2 for me, but it closed back below. So it untriggered, not a valid signal. I do like that we undercut the low over here as well. And uh, that's why I had that's why I had the line. I was keying off of this level. If it closed above, I would have bought it. We would have had a we would have had a nice 
uh, under 30, over 30, would have had a V2, false breakout to the downside, rejection of the negative third ATR channel while MACD was positive. Uh, but it untriggered, it kind of muted the whole point. But next week, if Carnival CCL does go under 30 again and over 30 again, I will be buying it. Goldman Sachs, well, we're very close to a 520 crossover. The five at the moment is 298.43, the 20 is 298.61, so it has not closed above, but I really like the sideways motion here that we have, right? Look at this, we've moved up, sideways, 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 consolidating, hopefully before a larger move up or a larger move down. But if we get a 520 crossover next week, that's where I will be buying Goldman Sachs because of the sideways motion and a 520 crossover. Intel. Well, Intel, we are at a 32.25 RSI. We did bounce at the negative third ATR channel, which is a decent sign. MACD is positive. What do I want from this? Well, I want another under 30 over 30. This would have been a valid signal on Friday because it did go under 30 over 30. Uh, but again, I wasn't here. I didn't take the trade. So for me, looking at Intel for next week, I want to see another test, another either close under 30, close back over 30, or an intraday rejection of 30 RSI on Intel. Same with NVIDIA. Of course, the semiconductors, whether it's uh, AMD, whether it's NVIDIA, whether it's Intel, they're all kind of in the same boat here. NVIDIA a little bit stronger. It's a 35 RSI. It's right at the negative third ATR channel. What I would be looking for next week on NVIDIA is an under 30 over 30. Be better if it was under 30 over 30 with the V1, V2. But, you know, every single indication that you get or like a V1, V2, if I had two stocks and one was an under 30 over 30 and then I had another stock that was an under 30 over 30, but it was also a V1 or a V2, I picked that one right? Because there's more signals. More signals means more buyers. More buyers means you have a better chance of having a profitable trade. So for NVIDIA, nothing right now, but if it goes under 30, over 30, that's what I'll be looking for. Rio Tinto. Sound like a broken rep record, but it's the same thing here. We On Friday, we went under 30, over 30. That would have been legitimate. Let's see. Did we have a false breakout to the downside? No, we did not of this low here. So next week, what I'm looking for Rio Tinto would be another under 30 over 30. And ideally I'd like to see it break back over the, this, the low of this previous range. Right now we've broken down to a new, uh, a new level because we, we closed below here. But if we could get a under 30 back over 30 and back over this low, back over back in, into the old range, maybe even a V2, here's bar one, here's bar two, bar three would, uh, would need to close above bar one's close. I would even take it with that, even if we didn't get an under 30 over 30 because of the rejection of this, these loads here. And, you know, like I mentioned, you know, this podcast, I try to do kind of a high level. I'm not really trying to, I, I don't have the time in this podcast to teach you all the particulars of what I'm doing, V1s, V2s, and all this kind of stuff. But I do have vi online video courses on udemy.com. And I do teach private one-on-one -on -one lessons. So, you know, if you're interested, uh, I go through, it's 15 hours. I teach you exactly step by step by step. So you know exactly how to do it. Uh, here is S&P 500. Now, uh, I would have bought this for sure on Friday if I had not had the doctor's appointment because we have a nice V2 and we have a higher low V2. Higher low V2 means that we close below the negative one ATR channel. We rallied into the value zone. We pulled back and then created a V2. Well, there is a V2 here. Do you see it? Here is day one or bar one. Bar two goes below the low of bar one by at least a quarter ATR. Then bar three closes above bar one's close, right? That's the line. That's the pink line. Bar one, two, three, two goes under bar one by at least a quarter ATR. Bar three closes above bar one's close. And more importantly, closed back into the value zone while MACD was positive. So I want to reiterate, I did not buy this, um, but I would have bought this. One thing to consider though, see the big down bar that we have right here? Halfway of that down bar is coinciding right with the 20, oops, sorry right with the 20 EMA. So 
if this trade does take off, I would expect that we would have some resistance right here. But, um, you know, maybe that doctor's appointment saved me a little bit, little bit of money on this trade. But let's break this trade down as if I would have bought it. Okay, so let's do this. Let's get the and let's just go through the steps. Okay, so the steps are first, I need to find a setup. Well, here's the setup. It's a higher low V2. Now, what do I do after I find the setup? Now I have to position size based upon the market's current volatility. Sounds difficult. It's not. This is what you do. A good rule of thumb is you take 1% of your total capital. That is your maximum allowed loss. Doesn't mean 95% of the time you are not going to hit your maximum allowed loss, but you have to prepare for it just in case it is the case. But let's go with the hypothetical $100,000 account. 1% of that is $1,000. So if you have a $50,000 account, 1% would be 500. If you have a 200, uh, sorry, $25,000 account, 1% would be 250. So let's go with the hundred hypothetical $100,000 account. 1% is $1,000. I take $1,000. I divide it by the value of the two ATR. One ATR means average true range. It's expected to move that much. Two ATR is twice that, so it should not move that far. It's two standard deviations away, away from where I bought it. So, all right, so we have the 1% of the hypothetical $100,000. I take that, I divide that by the value of the two ATR, 1815. And that would tell me to buy 55.09 shares. So I'd round that down to 50, 55 shares. Now, if 55 shares moves the value of two ATRs, which is 18.15, that would be exactly $1,000. So let's just say I bought this right here at the close. Let's say I bought it right there. And again, I did not buy this. I would have bought it, but I wasn't here for the close, so I didn't buy it. So let's just say we bought at 381.30. All right, so I take 381.30. Oh, I'm sorry, is that the right price? Yeah, 381.30 and I minus $18.15. That's two ATRs, right? So 381.30 minus 18.15. 363.15, that would be my emergency stop. 363.15. 363.15 would be my emergency stop. And because of the amount of shares that I bought, because I took the $1,000, I divided it by 18.15, that means if the price gets down here to the emergency stop, how much will I lose? $1,000. Percentage wise, how much is that? It's a lot of percent. It's about 5%. Do I lose 5% of my capital? No, because I position size correctly, I'm only going to lose 1%. But that's in the worst case scenario if it gets down there. So that's my emergency stop. Where's my end of day stop? Well, end of day stops on V1s or V2s are close below halfway the washout bar. This is the washout bar right there. So I would draw a line here. It's about halfway, wouldn't you say? So that would be my end of day stop if I have a close below halfway of this bar, just like I did on Home Depot, then I would get out, right? If it closed here, I'd get out. Would I lose a thousand? No, I only lose a thousand if I get down here. Anything above here is going to be less than a thousand. Hopefully it's going to go up, right? But, um, and then the next thing I would do, so we, we, we see the trigger, the higher low V2, we, we position size, based upon taking 1% of our maximum allow 1% uh, of our capital dividing by the 2 ATR that shows us how many shares to buy also shows us where emergency stop is this is the end of day stop halfway a close below halfway of the washout bar what's the next thing i need to do i need to put my trailing stop level well how much is trailing stop level it's 1.5 ATRs above the entry so let's see 1361 Sometimes it's hard to get this exactly right. Let's see. Oh, 1361. Okay, so it's going to be just a touch below there, like that. Yep. 
So that's gonna be my trailing stop level. So you see what I did? I found the setup, I found the entry signal, I position size based upon volatility and what my maximum allowed loss is. I place my emergency stop. I know where my end of day stop, close below halfway the washout bar. And then lastly, I go to profit stuff, right? This is 1.5 ATRs above my entry. If I make it up there, then I go into trailing stop mode. So this is not a trade that I took, but it was a good example of a trade that I would have taken and how I would set it up. So I hope, I hope that helps. All right, next on board, UNG. Uh, someone in our private Skype group, my good friend Lava, this was his trade on Friday. And I know exactly why he bought this. He bought this because of this nice close under, close back over the 200 day moving average. And I'll bet you if we go over to the weekly, we're going to find some support. And we did. It bounced off the 250 SMA. It also held at the negative one ATR channel. So I hope that goes up for Lava. Uh, but in the future, what I'm looking for here would be another close under, close over the 200 or a rejection of the 250 below or a rejection of the 300 below. So that's how I'm going to play UNG if I play it. Another close under, close back over the 200 day moving average or another intraday rejection of the 200 day moving average or close under, close over the 200, uh, 250, close under and back over the 300 or an intraday rejection of the 300, intraday rejection of the 250 or intraday rejection of the uh, 200. Um, what I really kind of like here though, I would prefer the 300 day moving average because this is a weekly chart. You see the 200 day moving average here at 1736. Well, there should be some buyers that come in there. There should be some support there at, at uh, 1736 and that would dovetail right here with some kind of rejection or getting very, very close to the 300 day moving average. So nothing for me yet on UNG. Um, ideally, I'd be looking at that 1730 level with the, with the uh, nice confluence of the weekly at the 200 day moving average and the daily at the 300. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, let's see. All right, next on board is UUP. UUP is the US dollar and I would be looking for something to the short side on the dollar because of this double top and this bearish divergence that we have here. You can see this high and this high correlates with these strong tall MACD bars. That means there was MACD is a, is a, a momentum indicator and so we had a big strong move up. You don't need MACD to show you that. You can see it definitely went up but I look at the levels of these MACDs then we had a pullback into red and then look on Friday. Friday, we tested the high, the previous high and rejected, but look at the MACD bars. The MACD bars are very short compared to these tall ones here. This is what's called a double top with a bearish divergence. This is a bearish setup. I studied one-on-one -on -one with Dr. Alexander Elder and he feels like double bottoms with bullish divergences, double tops with bearish divergences are the strongest technical indicator there is. They are very, very strong. I don't use them exclusively because they don't happen very often, but I'm sure you've heard of Dr. Alexander Elder. He's an excellent author, excellent trader, very, very smart guy. And uh, I'm sure if he looked at this right now, this would have some interest to him because of the high with the tall MACD bars, the, pre, the, the equal high over here with the lower MACD bars. But the question here is, yes, you have a double top with the bearish divergence, but you just go jumping right in. No, you need some kind of signal. A signal for me, uh, at the, because we have this double top with the bearish divergence, I'd like to see it go back up into a higher range, possibly reject the 60, uh, I'm sorry, reject the 70 RSI, or we have, we have a move up and some kind of V1 to the downside. We were just talking about V1s to the upside, but you can also use them to the downside as well. So really, I, I can't really explain what exactly needs to happen, but when it happens, I'll see it. But I can tell you one thing for sure. If we had a rejection of the 70 RSI and a pullback, we went above 70 RSI and then closed below. I mean, we closed above, closed below, or we had an intraday rejection of the 70. That's where I would short the dollar, especially because we have this uh, double top and bearish divergence. And we also have an RSI divergence. Look at the high here. Look at the high of the RSI here. Now we're higher 
it's lower. So there's a double top with the bearish divergence. There's a double top with an RSI bearish divergence as well. And you want to you want to go the extra mile. There's an ATR divergence. Look at the high here. We were at the third, fourth, fifth, five. It got like five and seven eighths on the ATR channels. Look here. We're just as high and we were only at the third ATR channel. That is called a ATR channel divergence. So there's all sorts of bearish divergences here. Double top, bearish divergence. Double top, RSI divergence. Double top, ATR divergence. So I just need to find the right entry trigger. That would either be a rejection of the 70 RSI or some kind of move back up into the higher range and reversal back with a uh, V1 or a V2. Don't do a lot of shorting on this channel, but uh, this one really stuck out to me. All right, Verizon. All right, this is a weekly trade that I am looking for on Verizon. And before I get into this, I wanna share this with you. This is the Inner Circle Trader or ICT over on YouTube. And so this is a great, great channel. You know, I, I, I have the five different approaches, the trading approaches that I've used for almost 27 years now. And I haven't learned a new one in a while, but thanks to my trading partner, Ava, she really delved into, the, in, into this uh, YouTube channel and it's really great. They're called Fair Value Gaps. I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you check out this channel. And there's lots of videos. Let me show you the three that I started out with. I started out with episode number three, episode number six, and episode number nine. Three, six, and nine is what I would suggest that you watch. You're gonna learn about fair value gaps. I'm not gonna teach them here. I'm not an expert in them. Uh, as of yet, although Ava is, uh, but uh, the owner of this channel, Mike, does a really great job of explaining fair value gaps. And so that bring, and so check him out on uh, YouTube, The Inner Circle Trader, subscribe to him, start off by watching lessons number three, six, and nine, and you'll be really happy that you did. I've been using this for several months and it's pretty dang impressive, especially in uh, my day trading. So let's go back over here to Verizon. And uh, I'm not gonna go into detail, but on, on uh, with ICT fair value gaps, what you wanna do, and I'm not gonna go into detail, okay? I'm just gonna kind of briefly go over this. You wanna look for levels of liquidity, multiple points of, of liquidity. You wanna see a big emphatic move down that takes out a, a, a swing low. That changes the market structure to bearish. And then you wanna short the rally that comes back up into the value zone. Well, here's bar one, bar two, bar three. You see this gap here? Here's the low of bar one. Here's the high of bar three. Inside this little gap, prices have not been tested. That's um, uh, from the ICT perspective, this is likely where the market will come back down. So. I am not going to uh, write that this would be a valid short inside of this gap, but I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to wait to see if we could get a rejection of the 200 day moving average. So that is combining what I do along with what ICT does, uh, bearish market structure change, rally back into the fair value gap just by itself, that would be okay. But I like that the 200 day moving average is there. So if I get a rejection of the 200 day moving average while we're in the value gap, that is where I will short this on the weekly, but I have to wait till Friday. And then we have earnings come up. So I may only be able to hold this for about a week. I never hold through earnings, but I will wait next week for uh, uh, Verizon on the weekly to see if it rejects the 200 day moving average and then I will buy it. But please, please, please do yourself a favor. You know, this is a different channel. I don't care. I just want every, I want to share as much good information with people as possible. I just want you all to become better traders whether it's my channel or not, but here it is, the Inner Circle Trader over on YouTube. It's very, very popular, and this approach is pretty dang awesome because I've been using it for several months now, so I can attest to that um, on the day trades for sure. Okay, last one, XLU. And we have another fair value gap right here. 
we made a lower high we took out this low we're back into this value gap i will wait for friday because it's a weekly trade i will wait for friday to see if it hangs in this value gap my stop if i do take it would be uh, 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 uh close over this swing high here so anyway i hope that's helpful for you everyone um i hope you've had a little little bit of a reprieve in some of your moves uh from last week glad to see the markets up and you know if there's anything i can help you with please reach out leave a comment um you know i mentioned that i do teach private one-on-one -on -one lessons in the evening time via skype i love to teach i've taught people from all over the world i think the best way to learn anything is to work one-on-one -on -one with your teacher or your coach whether it's sports or trading this is trading and um, you know, in the course uh, that I teach, the one-on-one -on -one course, I teach you all five of the different trading approaches that I use. I teach you step-by-step -step exactly how to use it. We do a lot of simulation trades, and it's very important to me that my trader, uh, my my students succeed as traders. So I put 110% into it. And uh, the course does cost 1,750 bucks, but it's worth every penny. So if you're interested, all you have to do is send me an email. The email's in the link of this YouTube description. Just reach out, say, hey, Greg, potentially interested in your course. I'll reply and say, great, thanks for saying hi. Let's set up a Skype call. Uh, the Skype call's free, it's not a sales call, I promise you. I just wanna learn more about you and your trading, your trading challenges, your goals. It's a great time for you to ask me any particular questions about the course that I teach. And then when we're done with the call, it's on you. You think about it as long as you want. And if you want to reach back out, uh, if you've made a decision, say, yay, Greg, let's do this. We'll set it up. We'll set the time, the date. We'll get going. And I know you'll be happy that you did. And if you don't want to, don't reach out to me. No problem. Like I said, it's not a sales call. Um, secondly, I do have a nice uh, online video on uh, udemy.com called the deep Di deep dip by stock trading strategy it's a great course i've sold so many around the world gotten so many good reviews the best part is it's like 12 or 15 bucks and the links in the description but don't let the the low price fool you because there's 26 videos there's nine and a half hours of total video there's 15 study guides and i teach you step by step how to trade the deep dip by stock trading strategy and lastly if you enjoyed this video, if you found something of value here, I would one, I really appreciate if you could just hit the thumbs up button. It helps to build the channel. It lets YouTube know there's some valuable content here. Um, you know, if you'd like to share it on social media, I would appreciate that as well. But at the very least, if you found something helpful here, if you could just hit the thumbs up button, that's all I would ask. And the other thing I would ask is that you enjoy the rest of your weekend. I hope you have a really good and safe 4th of July. Um, I like to mention uh, this world would be a better place if we could all just do one random act of kindness for another person each day. I love animals. So if I could ask you to maybe do, do one random act of kindness for an animal as well, I know they appreciate it. I grew up with animals, but whether they're animals or humans, an act of uh, kindness is appreciated. And uh, I think it's good karma. I think it goes a long way. And hopefully one day, uh, if you need it, someone will be there to give you that act of kindness as well. But other than that, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Enjoy the 4th of July. Be good. Be safe. Get out. Maybe do a little exercise. Do a little chart study like Ava. And um, maybe a little reflection, a little presence work. And uh, But I just hope you have fun. Hope you have fun with your family. Ho hope you have fun with your friends. And uh, we'll see what this uh, trading week is going to bring to us starting Monday. But thanks again for coming, everyone. Really do appreciate it. And uh, we'll talk to you all soon. If you have questions or comments, just leave them below. All right. And on the way out here, I have to run the U.S. Legal Disclaimer. Thanks so much, everyone. Take care and happy 4th of July. Bye. U.S. Government Required Disclaimer. Stock, options, futures, and forex trading is not appropriate for everyone. While there is a potential for large rewards, there is also a substantial risk of loss associated with trading. The material in this video or live broadcast is not geared towards any particular individual or to any particular financial situation and is not intended to meet the particular investment objectives of any viewer. This video or live broadcast, like all instructional materials produced by Gossett Trading and Mentoring LLC, is created and published for informational and educational purposes only. Any and all information contained in, implied, or referenced by this video or live broadcast 
is not to be construed as investment advice and no representation is made that any individual or entity involved in production of this video or live broadcast is an investment or financial advisor or is registered or authorized to give any financial advice. We are publishers and educators only. Therefore, the various producers of this video or live broadcast will not accept liability for any loss or damage of any kind which may arise either directly or indirectly out of the use of any of this material, including any loss of profit. No representation is made that any account or investment will or is likely to achieve the profit or losses demonstrated. We recommend consultation with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision. This video or live broadcast is not to be construed as an offer to buy or sell any security, financial instrument, or financial product of any kind. Notice is hereby given that any individual or entity involved in production of this video or live broadcast or their clients may have an interest in any security, financial instrument, or financial product mentioned or referenced. Any simulated or hypothetical performance Result depicted does not represent actual trading and therefore may under or overcompensate for the impact of various market factors such as lack of liquidity. Thank you.